Hi friends, uh, three years ago I posted the unboxing and review of Ibel's Impact Drill. If you haven't seen that yet, you can watch it from the link in the description. And today we'll be doing a complete teardown and see how much wear and tear has happened during 3.5 years of operation. By usage, I mean I've used it rigorously for projects that are way beyond its capabilities, like drilling a massive hole for exhaust fan installation and such projects. And recently it just stopped working ever since it was dropped from on top of a roof and it's not responding. Today we'll take it apart and see how much wear has happened and can we repair it and make it working again. Let's do this. Before performing any maintenance or repairs on your drill, make sure you unplug it first. The body panels can be taken off by removing these five screws. By seeing it, I believe the fault is with the power cord as there are no signs of damage, physical damage or mechanical failure of gears, bearings, carbon brush, everything seemed to be just normal. So we'll take out the wire by unscrewing two terminal screws at the trigger switch and unscrewing the two screws will remove the wire terminals. Then we need to check the continuity between the power cord and the both ends of the power cord if the supply is coming so by checking i got proper continuity in one of the wires while the other one was showing uh, no continuity at all so i was sure that there was a, no proper connection between the terminals i wasn't sure where the conductor was actually broken from so i decided to peel off some insulation near the strain sleeve maybe if we could reuse the old wire itself so but Checking the continuity at multiple points, I got no positive hope, so I just decided to replace the entire power cord with a better one. Before replacing the power cord, I decided to properly clean all the parts and remove the old sludge, dirt and dust settled inside and apply new fresh grease so that it performs really good for the next few years. And this is the plate which actually switch modes between hammer mode and normal drill mode. And here we have the keyless chuck along with its ball bearings, the gear with its wedges and the pushback spring. So this is how it switch modes. When it is in drill mode, it is against the plate. And in hammer mode, the hole is behind that shaft, which allows it to move back and forth. And the spring is actually which forces it forward and the force pushes it back. And, that's up. and these wedges create that hammering action. This is the other side of wedge and behind that hole we have the plate which slides back and forth. And this is the rotor assembly along with its cooling fan and the ball bearings. I just removed the old sludge with some tissue paper from all the parts and there are some body, the body panels and washable parts. I just washed them thoroughly with some mild soap. And other parts I just wiped with some mildly damp cloth. This is the hardened plate which I mentioned in the beginning. It's the one which switches modes between. And that's the body panel. I dried everything with, uh, with a blow dryer such that no moisture settles there. If some moisture enters the bearing that may ruin it and it will create noise. So we have to make sure no water gets in between the bearings. I properly lubricated the bearings with some WD-40 as well as some grease so that they can run really smooth for a couple of years or maybe even for months. I installed everything back into its place. I ground the contact point of carbon brushes which touches the commutator and made it flat using uh, an emery paper. This will allow a smoother rotation than keeping it curved. Install the assembly back into its slots. We have to be careful about organizing the wires. They should not be broken between the body panels or be touching some uh, moving parts. You have to carefully arrange that. And the hardened plate was inserted into its plastic holder and I lubricated it with some grease as well and inserted back into its slot and this is how it moves you can see through that hole how it switches between drill modes and hammer modes I lubricated that region as well with some grease the wedges 
and the meshing area everything we have to properly lubricate so that they don't wear out during operation and this is a spring I inserted back into its place and the lubrication is actually not sufficient so I will add some more grease and I'm just checking if it's everything is spinning right or if it is rubbing again so I added more grease in the gears the cord which came from the brand was not adequate for my working purposes so I decided to upgrade it to a longer one and with a better gauge I screwed the wires in the plug terminals and fastened them really tight and secure so they don't come out Unfortunately, the plug I got was a cheaper, lower quality and there was no strain sleeve so I just decided to wrap some insulation tape instead which acts like a straight sleeve so pro to protect it from any drops or pulling and I fitted it back. On the other side, I inserted its pre-existing strain sleeve and marked how much length of wire I need to screw it in the trigger so I removed the insulation and put some solder at the end points and put it in the terminals and fastened it tight and secure same with the other terminal and the connection is complete now we have to safely organize the wires so that they don't come in between the body panels while we close it or oh, they should not come in between the rotating moving parts as well to make the strain sleeve much secure I, uh, I wrapped some insulation tape and place the lock back into its place and now I'm organizing the wires safely and securely between the body terminals so that they don't crack or break and applied some more grease before closing and finally I'm putting it back together roughly spinning the sound doesn't come good there seems to be something wrong with it like it's not a smooth sound anyway we'll just plug it and check if the sound is coming right so I fastened everything and the sound is not satisfactory I think I messed up somewhere something might have went wrong we we'll just plug it and check yes I hope you can notice there is some unusual noise which is coming it doesn't sound like more mechanical but more like an electrical kind of noise like a vibration or something we'll take it apart again yes the stator assembly is actually vibrating when the current passes and that's why it's making noise we need to provide some damping insulation on both sides such that it absorbs the vibration and remains stable in addition to that I noticed some scratches and wear on the rotor when the stator is actually vibrating it rubs against the rotor and that may cause some issues in the long term we need to fix this see from the it might have rubbed again it might have ground against the inner walls of the stator assembly so we will provide some insulation some damping insulation on the plastic body panels and the stator so that it remains stable and secure I don't have the right grade of material so here I'm using some foam double sided tape and giving it a layer of insulation tape so that it doesn't deform at high temperatures. The insulation layer will protect it from temperatures and the foam will provide the damping. So this is the insulation tape to protect it from the heat effects one thing you have to be careful here is you make sure you don't obstruct the air passages otherwise it will overheat and may even totally ruin the whole assembly because of overheating so air passage should not be obstructed anyway the bolts should not be closed
by manually spinning we can notice some noise it is because the damping is now only from one side but after inserting the cover after assembling the cover the damping will be on both sides so the stator will come in the center axis so the other side also i have provided the same kind of insulation and i put it back and now listen to the sound it has become much smoother than before The drill was just perfect after the repairs and I used it for numerous projects ever since and it is functional, fully functional without any issues or overheating, it's just perfect. And I hope you enjoyed this video and do consider subscribing if you find this content useful and it really motivates me to post new videos and that's all. Thanks for watching.